Hi, Shane here. You're watching Sam for God. And this is Mark. Check her out. So hi guys, how are you doing? A few weeks ago I posted a video asking you guys to ask me any questions that you want because I wanted to do a Q&A video because I haven't really done very many of them and I was honestly expecting maybe about 10 or 20, 30 I push different questions to come in but Lord have mercy, I had over a hundred comments on that video with loads of amazing different questions and then I ended up with the dilemma of what do I do? Do I answer every single question and make like a four hour long video? Or do I just pick out some of them but then I really enjoyed all the questions so I wanted to answer all of them. I did a poll on Twitter asking you guys what you think I should do and about 70% of you said that I should just answer all of them and make a really long video. But even though most of you voted for that, I decided to do something else which actually a few of you suggested it to me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into a few different videos. So I'm going to do three or four different Q&A videos in the next few months until I manage to answer every single question. So if I don't answer your question in this particular video, you're watching right now don't worry there's a big chance I'll probably answer it in the next one or the one after that however before we even get to the Q&A I want to show you something amazing that a very cool company called George Wood Watches sent me you guys know I absolutely love watches like I wear my watch all the time I can never leave the house without my watch but I've had this watch for quite a long time now like at least a year and I absolutely love it like like I said I wear it all the time and it's black and it's really nice but I've been wanting a new watch for a long time so when the lovely people at George contacted me and said hey Sam for God would you like a new watch i had a look at their watches on their website and i'll leave the link down below for you guys to go and have a look as well and i was like oh my god these watches are beautiful yes please so then it arrived and it arrived in this beautiful wooden box which i mean i'm literally obsessed with this look at it i don't know how well you can see it but it says jordan here and it's got a little logo here as well and it smells of wood which is beautiful and i thought we could open it together right now and see what's inside so this is what you are presented with when you open the box it's a beautiful shiny shiny watch oh my god this is actually so pretty and it's the kind of wood that i wanted so they've got a, you know different selections if you go on their website they've got different colors all of them are kind of wooden like because that's what uh, the watch is the kind of the kind of watches that they do they make are but this was my favorite and they were kind of semi the one that i wanted and I couldn't be more pleased with it. Like, literally, guys, look at it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to take it out now and put it on because I'm just very excited, guys. Ooh, this is so fancy. So this is it. I've got it on and it looks absolutely beautiful. I mean, the watch has still got like a plastic thing on it, which I'm going to keep on for now because I don't want it to get damaged. But obviously, you can take it off. And I should probably get rid of this thing as well. But again, I want to keep it on for now because it's a beautiful logo. But like, wow, I really like it. It's something different and unique. Like you don't see very many people with watches like this in the streets, do you? And I'm a fan of anything that's different and looks cool. So I very much dig this watch. I love it. And I'm very grateful to the people at George for sending me this. By the way, guys, this is not a sponsored video. They didn't pay me to like promote them. They literally asked me if I wanted a watch and I said yes. And they were very kind enough to send me one. And they've been even kinder to give you guys a chance to win one of these watches as well. So if you'd like to win a gift card to use, I'm one of these watches like this and these cost quite a lot of money guys i'll leave a link down below for you guys to go and enter you have until the 13th of august 2017 to enter all you have to do is just put your name and like an email and some contact information and you can be anywhere in the world because what they'll do is send you like a code if you win i think and then you can then use that code to get some money off and then buy one of the watches online yourself kind of thing i'm pretty sure that's how it works it's really simple and easy but all the information will be down in the description box anyway like i said you go on to the 13th of august to enter it and i would enter it if i was you because there are so many different watches like if you think this is nice you should go on their website and look at all the other ranges that they've got because they have all sorts of stuff like for women for guys everything and that's not all if you want to just go ahead and buy yourself one of these watches right now you can get 25 dollars off and it's in dollars because it's an american company but that's still an amazing offer so if you go and have a look on the website and if you like any of these watches and you decide that you want to buy one for yourself or for a friend or a family member when you go to the checkout all you have to do is put sam for god 25 as a code and that will give you 25 dollars off which which is amazing again all the details for that will be down below as well and you can check out my instagram as well because there'll be a picture of it with more stuff and yeah guys i'm excited to see which one of you guys will win the giveaway please make sure you do let me know once the giveaway ends on the 13th of august they'll contact you don't you worry about that and then we can be like watch buddies together we can have matching watches Anyway, now that that's out of the way and I've got my beautiful new watch with me, let's get on to the giveaway. I've chosen about mm, 25 questions for this particular video. I don't know how long it's going to take for me to answer them. I think it's still going to be a very long video, but hopefully you guys don't mind because I know you guys are used to my long videos and some of you actually somehow like them. So without further ado, let's get to it. Lauren Reeds asks, 
If you could only ride one Disney ride for the rest of your life, which would you pick from any of the parks? Lauren, that's a very good question, and I think I'm going to have to go for... Oh, it's a hard one, actually, because my favourite ride of all time is Thunder Mountain in Disneyland Paris. I think it's definitely the best of the big Thunder Mountains out there, and it just makes me so happy. It was my first ever roller coaster. I've loved it for, like, so many years. It, like makes my excitement levels go up and I, I just love it. However, if we're only talking about one particular ride that I can only ride over and over again, I might have to go for Pirates of the Caribbean or... I mean, It's a Small World is another choice, but I think I might get sick of It's a Small World just because it's song. I mean, I love It's a Small World, but like having to only ride that for the rest of my life, I don't know. Hmm. I'm going to go for either Pirates of the Caribbean, the Paris version, or Thunder Mountain because I love both of them a lot and I think I'd enjoy going on them over and over again until infinity. Irene Londa Perez, and I really hope I pronounce your name right. You're one of the most loyal viewers I have and you always comment on my videos and Twitter and stuff, so let me know if I pronounce your name right because I'd be upset with myself if I didn't. Anyway, her question is, can you do a house tour or room tour? The answer to those questions are yes, especially the second question. I mean, I don't think I'll ever do a house tour because this isn't my house. I don't live in my own house. I live with my parents. And I guess that kind of answers your next question as well. Do you live on your own? But a room tour is something that a lot of you guys have been asking me to do for a long time. And all I can say is I'm really sorry that I haven't done one yet. I will do one eventually. I just need to figure out just a few things in my room because my room at the moment is a bit messy and there are a few things in my room that I just need to organise or like little shelves and things that I still need to buy or change and blah, blah, blah. So yes, hopefully by the end of 2017 there will be a room tour on my channel so look out for it. The next question is from Robbie and Maddie Tube and they ask hi Sam love your vlogs and congrats on getting to 6,000 thank you very much who is your favourite YouTuber? Now that is a good question and it's something that kind of changes for me from time to time but there are some YouTubers that I really really like and respect a lot so if we're talking about some like bigger YouTubers I mean Evan Edinger I really enjoy his content I think he's very interesting like every week when he puts a new video up I look forward to what he's going to talk about I feel like he's quite unpredictable with what his videos are going to be like I mean sometimes they can be a bit samey but most of the time he talks about interesting topics and I really enjoy that I also really like Jack Mate so I don't know if you've heard of him or not because he's not very mainstream but he does have quite a lot of subscribers and he's like a comedian YouTuber he makes a lot of hilarious videos and he's not a big fan of Alfie Days and you guys know how I feel about Alfie Days so we have that bond going on me and Jack mate if we're talking about Disney vloggers the YouTuber I've been enjoying the most at the moment is definitely Adam Hatton I've known of Adam Hatton for quite a few years now I've enjoyed his videos for a long time but recently since he's moved to Orlando for his second Disney program he's been posting a lot of great content like weekly great stuff from Disney World and it's oh it's it's great every single week you get a full-on new vlog from him from one of the Disney parks and I don't know I think he's a very very good vlogger he shows everything pretty much like what I do so it's really nice to see somebody else do like long videos and literally go into detail with every single thing they show and I really enjoy that so if you haven't checked out Adam Hatton go and check him out Manon Buzz I really hope I pronounced your surname right she says, congratulations, I have some questions. The first one is, how did you come up with your username? And I'm going to get back to that later because somebody else has also asked me that. The next one is, who is, was your favourite actor to play the Phantom? That is a good question. And even though a lot of people might think that I'm going to go for Ramin Karimloo because I saw Ramin Karimloo once as the Royal Phantom and it was at the Royal Albert Hall and he was fantastic. But he's not my favourite Phantom. My favourite Phantom that I've seen live is definitely John Owen Jones. I think his version of the Phantom was so vulnerable, so emotional, so beautiful and his voice was just sublime i loved him he was fantastic your next question is what do you like to collect the most oh that's a very hard question um i don't know you know i think actually disney traditions because i don't collect them as often as i collect other things because they're a bit more expensive than other collectibles so when i do it just feels a bit more special when i like add a new thing to my collection of the traditions and my friends especially rebecca who you all know they sometimes buy me traditions for my birthdays and stuff and i don't know i mean i don't have a, the biggest traditions collection but i really enjoy it when i you know add a new one to them so i'd say probably my disney traditions collection is my favorite your last question is would you do a favorite musicals of all time video with like a top 10 my on, I have already done a top five favorite musicals of all time video. It was from back in 2015 though, so maybe you haven't seen it, but I'll try and link it down below. But I might do a new one, like a top 10, because like I said, the last one was only a top five and I can make it a bit more exciting and a bit more controversial with a top 10. Ellen Hanwright asks, are there any countries that you would love to visit that you haven't visited before? Cough, Australia, cough. And I love the fact that Bronnie has replied saying, and New Zealand as an add-on, I would play tour guide for you. That is firstly incredibly kind of both of you. I've never been to Australia or New Zealand and I would love to go one day. I just don't know when. I, I'd like to think that I can go before I turn 30, which is in three years time. And if I do, I'd be sure to let you guys know because it'd be lovely to meet you. It'd be lovely to get some tips from you as to where to go and stuff. But as for other countries that I'd love to visit, um, I've been wanting to go to Norway for the longest time possible. Like literally since I was about seven or eight. I don't know why I haven't gone yet because Norway 
Hull is not hard to get to. It's literally like an hour or two away from us. I think I just want it to be the perfect trip because I've been wanting to go for so long. I want it to be like amazing. I, I don't want it to be like something that I expected and it not to be, not to meet my expectations basically. So I'm just waiting for the perfect time to go and I just, I, I just probably, I should probably just, just go because there will never be a perfect time, you know. I can go anytime I want and hopefully I will go in the next year or so. Another place that I would really love to go to is Malaysia. Malaysia again has been on my list of places I want to visit since I was a child. I don't know if you guys remember but there used to be an advert on CNN, the news channel, and it was about Malaysia. It was like a touristy advert for Malaysia and it had a song that went like this. Malaysia truly Asia Please leave comments down below if you remember this I think they still play that advert sometimes and you can find it on YouTube Just search Malaysia truly Asia advert CNN and since then I've been wanting to go to Malaysia for so again for a very long time So hopefully that can happen in the next few years as well Jose Camacho asks besides all things Disney collectibles pins tombs tombs magnets, etc is there anything else you're a collector of? Yes, I have a collecting personality, which is very dangerous when it comes to spending money. But yeah, I, I collect a lot of things. I mean, I collect uh, theatre programmes. Every single show that I go to, I have to get myself a programme because for some reason I just feel like I need them in my life, even though what happens normally is that I read them once and then I never look at them again. But I've got like a massive box of programmes from over the years. I also like collecting mugs from pretty much every show that I go and see or every country that I visit. That's another thing that I do. I also have a collection of Wicked Snow gloves which you can see a couple of them maybe here I've got one two of them here visible on camera but yeah I've been collecting the wicked snow gloves since 2007 when I went to see the show for the first time and every time they bring out a new one I'm like I need it Amber Ekolov asks hi Sam you talked a little in videos before about living in different countries I think that is so interesting and was wondering where has been your favorite place to live that is a very good question so if you guys didn't know I've lived in four different countries I've lived in Switzerland Iran Austria and obviously England now and honestly I've loved every single place I've lived in for different reasons which is why it's really hard for me to say where I'm from when people ask me oh Sam where are you from or where do you call home I never know what to say because I genuinely feel like all four of these places that I've lived in are home but what I can say is that at the moment as a 27 year old my favorite place to live in is England where I live right now like I couldn't think of any other place to live in at this precise moment in my lifetime so maybe England but like when I was a child I loved Switzerland like that that's all I knew, that's where I grew up. Iran was good in my teenage years, Austria was fun. They all have their special things but I would have to say England because it's what feels the most homely to me at the moment anyway. Dollar298films asks, Hi Sam, if you check your Hotmail account, are there a bazillion messages? Um, yes, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say a bazillion, but there are always a lot of emails and messages on there. And I like it, you know, I enjoy receiving messages and comments from you guys, so it's, it's great, it's fun. It's the same with Instagram as well. I get so many Instagram requests like you know if people try to send you messages on Instagram that you don't follow and it kind of goes as a request on here at this precise moment in time I've got 28 requests and I haven't managed to look through them yet and it really annoys myself because I want to be able to reply to everyone I want to be able to keep on top of my messages all the time but I have found it to become harder and harder the more people start watching my channel and it's it really annoys me because one of my favorite things about making videos is connecting to you guys so I honestly try my best all the time to reply and if I don't please know that it's not because I didn't want to and I always try and read at least everything like I definitely definitely read everything I just sometimes don't get a chance to reply but yeah it can be a bit overwhelming sometimes I'm not gonna lie it's a good thing I've only got 6,000 because if I had more subscribers I don't know what I'd do Na Nat that's a cool name and a cool logo as a pizza says have you ever dealt or witnessed racism at Disneyland Paris? That is a good question and I have to be completely honest with you and say no, I've been lucky to never ever have experienced or seen racism at Disneyland Paris. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's happened before, I'm sure it would happen at some point in the future and it makes me sad that I'm saying this but you know, that's the society we live in and it could easily happen anywhere in the world and Disneyland Paris isn't immune from it, it can happen anywhere. But I've never experienced it myself and no one that I know has ever experienced it so I don't know, maybe I've just been lucky but yeah. It's, it's a sad thing that it, it does happen around the world sometimes. SLTSW14 says, Hey Sam, have you ever considered putting your family in your videos? Yes, I have considered it, but I can't because my parents, my mum and dad don't want to be on camera. They hate being online. The thought of them like being on social media is just out of the question. They hate it. They feel uncomfortable with it. So I respect that completely. And my brother, he's fine with it, but I just don't get to see him often. But whenever I do get to see my brother, I do sometimes put him on videos and pictures and stuff. So yeah, my brother's been on camera before. He's been on my videos before, but my parents, nah, never going to happen. What's your favorite food of all time out of all the Disney parks? Oh, this is a hard question and I think I've got two it's between 
I had a really amazing duck and rice at Yak and Yeti's in Disney World when I went in March and I absolutely loved it. Like it was one of the best meals I've ever had in my life. But also Cher Ami in Disneyland Paris does one of the best steak and chips I've ever had in my life. So it's either Yak and Yeti or Cher Ami at Disneyland Paris. Jamie Gitchard, I hope I pronounced his name right, Jamie. And I actually met you a few weeks ago, didn't I, at Wicked. So it was really lovely to meet you. He says, what would your dream Wicked cast be? Now that is a very good question and one that I have a decent answer to I think. My alphabet would definitely be Nikki Davis Jones because she's my ultimate alphabet. I've never seen any alphabet as good as her. I loved her voice, I loved her portrayal, I think she was amazing. And then my Glinda would of course have to be Diane Pilkington. I recently made a whole video about why I think she's the best Glinda there's ever been so go and check that out if you haven't. My Fiera would probably be Matt Willis. Quite a controversial one I think because not everybody was a fan of his portrayal but I thought he was an amazing Fiero and it worked really well with Nikki Davis Jones especially so I'd love to see them do As Long As You're Mine again and I think it'll be quite a good combination with him and Glinda Diane as well. My Bok would probably be either Alex Jessup or Adam Pettigrew. Hmm, one of those two. I like them both equally. I think they're both very good box. And my Nessa, I think would have to be Katie Ravely Jones because as much as she's been in the show for a very long time, she was my first ever Nessa and I do think she's had the best portrayal of what I think Nessa should be like. And so yeah, quite a boring answer I guess, but yeah, I'd have to go with Katie. I choose Clive Carter as the wizard because he's my favourite wizard of Oz ever. He had an amazing voice, he was so charismatic as the wizard and he was just really funny as well. Like he literally made the wizard's character interesting, which is quite hard to do I think. So Clive Carter as the wizard and then for Madame Horrible we'd have to go for Harriet Thorpe. Nobody has been able to play Madame Horrible as well as her in my opinion. Next question from Daniel Fotheringham. Sam, you've seen a lot of musicals, mainly around in London and West End. What's one musical you wish more people had seen? Note, this could be a current show in the West End or a show that has closed or finished its run. This is a very good question and I have more than one answer for it, so I'm gonna have to try and think of a good one. I would have to say either Love Story, the musical, which was on in the West End in, I think it was around 2011. It was originally done in Chichester and then it came to the West End for a few months and unfortunately it didn't last as long as it should have in my opinion. I was lucky enough to see it twice whilst I was in London and on Honestly, it was one of the most beautiful, heartbreaking, touching musicals I've ever seen. The music was beautiful in it, like, I still get goosebumps listening to the songs from it. It starred Michael Xavier and Emma Williams in it, and oh my god, they were both phenomenal in it. It was just such a beautiful story, and a simple love story basically, but done very well, and oh, everybody was in tears by the end of that show. So yeah, love story, or the other one would be Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Quite a controversial one, because not many people were a fan of the show when it was around, but I saw it a few times again and this was again back in 2011 and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was a very unique, very French obviously because that's a, it's a French show. Beautiful show. Again, I loved it. It was basically a love story but also I, I really enjoyed the songs. I loved the sets. I loved the cast in it. Meow Meow was in it and she was fantastic. So yeah, either Love Story or Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Monique asks, if you were a musical theatre song, which would you be? I would have to go for Dancing Through Life because I feel like that's what I do in my life. I just dance through life, literally. Like, I don't plan anything. I'm very spontaneous. I'm very unorganised. I just, like, go through life and hope for the best pretty much, which isn't what you guys should be doing. So please don't follow in my footsteps, guys, because you don't want to turn out like Fiera, do you? The Boy Who Lived 394. Hi, Hayden. He asks, hi, Sam. Would you ever consider moving closer to any of the Disney parks? Yes, I mean, definitely at one point in my life I'd like to. I don't think I'd ever move to Florida because I could not deal with the heat at all. And California, I don't know, it's just too far from everything. So I think Paris really is the only one for me. And I have definitely considered before, I mean, a few years ago I got offered a job to work in Disneyland Paris, but unfortunately I had to decline it. I couldn't take it at the time for different reasons. But yeah, I'd love to for sure either live in Disneyland Paris or close to Disneyland Paris for a short time in my life, at least six months or a year or something. Disney Diva asks, what is the meaning behind your YouTube name? And again, I'm going to put this question to the side because I'm going to come back to it because another person has also asked this question. And I feel like a lot of you want to know, so I'm going to leave that to the last question, guys. The next one is Diogo London or Diogo London. And their question is, what made you not want to follow the career you were studying for at university? So if you guys didn't know, I did my undergraduate degree at university in biomedical sciences. Yes. I was studying to become a scientist. I know that might sound hard to believe and you might think, what the hell Sam, what? That's very different to what you're doing now. 
but yeah i i've got a degree in biomedical sciences and the reason i did the degree is because at the time i thought i needed to do something academic with my life i was too scared to do anything else to be honest like i didn't feel like i had very many options it was either like maths or science or biology and stuff like that and i really enjoyed biomedical science and i enjoyed like learning about the human body and stuff so i thought yeah i'm gonna do that at uni and i did it and the first year was fine and towards the beginning of my second year i realized this is not for me like when things got more serious and people were thinking about like career choices after they graduate i started to panic and i was like i i don't want to work in a lab i don't want my life to be working in a lab for the rest of my life like this is not what i want and it was annoying because i like i said i enjoyed learning about you know the science and the human body and all that but my passion was never enough for it to ever become a career and i realized that in my second year but even though i realized it i decided to finish it anyway because i didn't want to waste my time i didn't want like a whole year to just be wasted so i studied and i revised and it, i found it very hard especially in the third year because i was surrounded by people who really like had a massive passion for it people who genuinely wanted a career in it when i was just there like huh, i'm just gonna revise for the laws like just because i feel like i have to and i was lucky enough that i still managed to graduate with a good degree and i still have the degree i've just never used my degree but i knew from the beginning of my second year that it wasn't for me but i just felt like i should finish it anyway just you know just it's always good to have a degree to fall back on in case other things go wrong and then when i finished that degree i did a postgraduate degree in journalism which is very in tune with what i do now which is youtube videos and i have my blog and twitter and all that social media so things have worked out for the best guys and that's something that i've learned like if you do the wrong degree at uni or you know even if you fail your exam like just don't worry because life will work out for the best no matter what happens in your education Hannah asks which Disney park that you haven't been to would you most like to visit next? The only two Disney parks that I haven't been to yet are Tokyo Disney and Hong Kong Disneyland. And the one that I'm desperate to go to, of course, is Tokyo Disneyland. I am obsessed with videos of Tokyo Disneyland. I watch them all the time, like vlogs of it, pictures. I just know that I'm gonna freak out when I finally get to go to Tokyo Disneyland. And hopefully I will. I am in the process of potentially planning a trip either next year or the year after. Let's have our fingers crossed, guys. Peter Shipway asks, are you going to somewhere in the city? The answer is yes. I'm gonna be there on the Saturday only, so if you're going on Saturday, feel free to look out for me. And if you do see me, obviously feel free to come up to me and say hi. I'd love to meet as many of you as possible. I'm looking forward to it. I didn't manage to go last year, but I went the year before in 2015 and I had a great time. So I'm looking forward to go back again this year. The next one is from Christopher Jeffries and he asks, what's your tradition when you arrive at Disneyland Paris? I.e. for example, go on a ride or get something to eat or meet a character or something else. My tradition when I go to Disneyland Paris is, firstly, I of course have to go to Disneyland Park first. There is no way you can get me to go to the studios first. Like, as much as I love Walt Disney Studios, Disneyland Paris is the main park you have to go to first. You need to walk down Main Street USA, you need to go and see the castle, you need to feel the smell of the popcorn. I need to do that, I cannot do anything else. And then once I do get to the park, what I normally like to do is walk through the castle and go to Fantasyland and then slowly make my way to It's a Small World and have It's a Small World be my very first ride of every trip. Unfortunately it's not happened every single time. It depends on who I go with. Sometimes people want to go on something else instead and I, I'm a nice person I feel like. I like to let people choose what they want to do as well especially if it's their first time or if they haven't been in a long time. But if I can and if people are like willing to compromise I try and go on It's a Small World first as my first ride. Marcus Gomez asks if you had to watch one Disney film for the rest of your life, what film would you choose? Toy Story. It's got to be Toy Story. And I know that's more of a Pixar film, but still, like, Toy Story, I can never get sick of it. It's my favourite film of all time, to be honest, not even just Disney-wise. So yeah, bit of Buzz and Woody makes me happy. Kay Wilby asks, how did your love of going to shows start? Did you go with your family when you were young? This is a good question as well. I think I've always loved musicals because as a child I was surrounded by music and musicals in a way. I mean, I grew up watching Barney the Dinosaur, as you guys know, the purple dinosaur, one of my favourite childhood memories. And even though Barney isn't necessarily a musical, there's a lot of songs in Barney. I mean, it's almost like a little mini musical for children. And like, I learned everything. I learned about sharing, I learned about friendship, I learned about brushing my teeth. All of that stuff I learned through music, through songs, because of Barney. And so I guess I've always enjoyed that kind of medium, you know, singing and dancing about things. Like, it's just natural to me. And then in 1999, I believe, or it was maybe 2000, the Disney version of Annie the Musical came out on the Disney Channel. And I was about 10 years old, and my mum was actually the one who was like, she saw an advert for it on TV and she was like, Sam, oh my God, you need to watch this. Like, because she'd grown up with the other, the original version of Annie, and she used to love it as a child. And when she found out that they were doing a Disney version of it, she obviously wanted me and my brother to watch it as well. So it came out me and my brother watched it i became obsessed with it i still absolutely adore that film if you haven't please check it out it stars alicia morton as annie and audra mcdonald as grace and audra mcdonald is like my queen it also stars kristen chenoweth as lily st regis so 
it's definitely worth checking out. But yeah, I remember I watched that film and I was obsessed with it. And obviously, that, I think that for me, that's the first musical I remember watching on TV. And obviously, then after that, I watched Sound of Music. And after Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins is the musical. So really, I think Disney has a lot to do with why I love musicals so much and why I love theatre so much. And then when I was about nine or ten, my parents took me and my brother to go and see The Lion King, the musical in the West End. And we, again, both absolutely loved it so much that we begged our parents to take us to see it again. And they were kind enough to take us again a couple of years later. So we got to see it twice as children and we were in love with it. And me and my brother used to actually reenact the scenes from Lion King the musical in our house. And he was obviously Simba, I was Nala. And we literally cast all our family members and relatives in the show. <laughs> So I remember my grandma, we cast her as Rafiki. One of our cousins was cast as Timon. It was a hilarious situation. We literally, as children, had plans of properly putting this on at one point in our lives. And obviously it never happened, but we did have rehearsals, me and my brother, many a times as children. This is how much we loved it. So yeah, I guess I've just been a fan of it since a young age. And it's probably mainly to do because of my family. Ali Newman asks, what do you do for a living? So... For those of you who don't know, I don't make a lot of money from making these YouTube videos. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I do make a tiny bit of money, but it's nowhere near enough for me to be able to live off on it. So I have to rely on other sources of income to live. And what I do is that I work part-time at the Royal Opera House, which is one of the most famous and well-known theatres, opera houses in the world. So that's what I do. I'm an usher there, I'm a front of house person, and I really enjoy it. It's great, the people are great. I get to see a lot of operas and ballets, and it's a really nice place to work out. It works out really well with what I do as well because I have my mornings free like my days free to do my YouTube videos and then some evenings I go to work and I get to be in a theatre which I love so it's all good and finally we'll get to the question that's been asked the most actually for some reason and this one is from Sherry Baby and they say love your videos and watch every day thank you I've always been curious about the meaning behind the name we've chosen for your channel. Does it have to do with your religious faith or does it have another meaning altogether? I noticed that the G and the O are capitalised but the D is not so I'm wondering if it's not symbolic of something else other than that what it is blah blah blah. Thanks so much and I'll watch. I'll be watching every day. Blessings from the USA. Firstly Sherry Baby thank you so much and hello to the USA that's very kind of you to say. So let's get to my username. When I was 15 years old, I used to go to a Christian school in Austria, not because I was a Christian, not because my parents were Christians, but simply because it was the only school in Vienna, Austria, that was an English-speaking school and that we could afford to go to. Because me and my brother did not speak German at the time, and even now my German is not the best. And when we moved there, obviously we wanted to continue our education, but there was no way in hell that we could have gone to a proper like Austrian school because we didn't speak German, so we would have failed at life. And so we found this American Christian school, which to this day remains the weirdest school I've ever been to. No offence to Christians, it was just a very weird school. I'll get to that later in another video someday, but yes, at that school, obviously a lot of the people that were there were Christians. And I remember <laughs> one time we had to like write our email addresses for some project or something. And when the sheet got to me, I was like looking at, you know, other people's email addresses and stuff. Cause you know, at the time we were teenagers and my email address at the time was no joke gorgeousgirl7 at yahoo.com. That was my first ever email address and I can't believe I just told you that. But yes, I was just, you know, curious to see what other people's emails are and one of the girls' emails was girl for God at hotmail.com or something. And I remember I looked at it and I was like, oh, that looks really cool. Just the way it looked, like girl, number four, God. It just looked appealing to me for some reason. And I remember in my head, I decided to turn it around. I was like, what if I change the girl to Sam? Because, you know, that's who I am. And then if you put Sam for God, then you have an equal amount of letters on each side of the number four. And honestly, to me, it just looked really cool. And I thought about the meaning. I was like, obviously the girl had to put it as her email because she was a big Christian or whatever. And she, she was implying that she's a girl living for God. But I thought that it doesn't necessarily have to mean that. Like it can have a double meaning. Because it can mean, it can mean Sam for God as in like, oh my God, I love God. I live for God. But it can also mean Sam for God as in I want to be God like Sam for God like Sam for president Sam for prime minister do you know what I mean so basically I decided to make that my username on everything that I was a member of at the time which was mainly like forums McFly forums and MySpace I think as well basically I was very much into social media even as a teenager I was actually a moderator on quite a few McFly forums and I was very proud of it as well and before I chose Sam for God I used to have stupid usernames like Sam loves Dougie or Sam loves McFly and things like that which were very common and a lot of people had already sometimes taken them. So when I started using Sam for God I became a lot more well known on social media even as a teenager because on all these kind of forums and McFly fan pages that I used to go on Sam for God was very easy for people to remember because most people had you know very common usernames like Tom is amazing or Dougie's beautiful things like that. 
and yet I was called Sam for God and it also meant that I didn't have to change them on any other new fan pages that I joined because it was pretty much guaranteed that nobody else would have that username so I just used the same username Sam for God on everything and then since then it just became my thing so literally when I made my YouTube channel which I made my YouTube channel a long time ago like I think it was back in 2009 that I made this channel that you're watching right now I just decided to go for Sam for God because I was very much well known as Sam for God online and it was just like my go-to username and I kind of regret it now I'm not gonna lie it's not the username that I would choose now if I was to make my channel now but at the same time it is quite catchy I guess and a lot of my friends like to joke about it with me and call me Sam forgot like I forgot because I am quite a forgetful person as well sometimes and I also run late my friend Rukaya likes to call me Sam for vlog which I probably would have considered naming myself if I was to make a channel now but it's too late now and I'm known as Sam for God and also it's not actually a no that's capitalized so it's a zero so it's Sam for G zero D and the reason for that is because before the current channel that you're watching on right now I used to have another YouTube channel and the other one was called Sam for God with a normal zero and so when I made this current one that you're watching me on right now and that I use now I couldn't use Sam for God because I'd already had that other channel if that makes sense and so I changed the O to a zero just so I could still have the same username but you know obviously it was spelled a bit differently so YouTube would accept it and that's why it's called Sam for God I bet you it wasn't as exciting as you thought it would be but at least now you know guys that is the meaning behind my ridiculous username but there you go that is the end of this video I hope you enjoyed it sorry if I didn't manage to answer your question but like I said I received a hell of a lot of questions and I will get to all of them eventually I think I'm going to try and do a new Q&A video every month so this is my August one of course and if you didn't have your question answered in this one feel free to check out for the next one next month and it will probably be there and I'll just continue doing them until I've answered all of them so yeah guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to enter the giveaway for this watch down below leave comments down below about anything you want and I'll see you next time bye